1965 to 1978, Project Serpo, Human, Alien Exchange Program, Part 14. The following story is either the greatest kept secret of all time or a complete fraud. You decide. This episode talks about the Magic Cube and Project Gleam. This presentation is of the information posted on the website, serpo.org, from a retired senior government official. The website was intended to facilitate the gradual release of confidential documents pertaining to a top secret text change program of 12 U.S. military personnel to Serpo, a planet of Zeta Aedeculi, between the years 1965 to 1978. Update on the CR, Crystal Rectangle Energy Source. Since 1956, many experiments were conducted using the CR. Most of the experiments were conducted by Los Alamos, or a contractor for the Department of Energy. Remember that the CR was described as follows. The dimensions are 26 centimeters by 17 centimeters by 2.5 centimeters. The CR weighs 728 grams. There is a possibility that there is more than one CR, one that weighs 668 grams and one that weighs 728 grams. There was a notation in a classified document that read, PVED-1, Particle Vacuum Enhanced Energy Device. This would indicate that there is a PVED-2. Scientists do not refer to the CR as a CR, but as a PVED or the magic cube. Remember the small dot that moved around the inside when an energy demand was placed on the CR? Our scientists have discovered the substance contained in the dot. The dot was found to be a perfectly rounded particle of charged antimatter. Our scientists still don't understand how this piece of antimatter can remain stable until it is tasked with movement. They still don't understand, once a demand is made to the CR, that the antimatter starts its movement and creates energy. Our scientists have found the CR is made of an unknown material with several unknown elements which have been detected. One of the materials is similar to carbon, but not exactly like carbon as we know it. Another substance is similar to zinc, but not the same consistency of zinc. Our scientists cannot explain the action of the antimatter in the actions of neutrons that are created and then disappear when the demand is lifted. Our scientists cannot explain why the constant temperature of the CR is 72 degrees. Even when heat is directed on the CR, the temperature remains at 72 degrees. How this occurs cannot be explained. Some scientists think the CR is operated remotely, perhaps by an unknown satellite in Earth's orbit. However, even when shielded, the CR operates normally. When an energy demand is placed on the CR, it creates a signal, which can be measured at 23.450 mhz. However, when increased demand is placed on the CR, the frequency is modulated from 23.450 mhz to 46.900 mhz, or double the original frequency. However, when the demand is reduced, the frequency drops to 1.25 khz, which is a constant frequency. When no demand is placed on the CR, regardless of what power demand is placed on the CR, the frequency never raises to more than 46.900 mhz. Remember the small set of squares, which contained horizontal wires. The wires were determined to be similar to tungsten. The wires somehow conduct the energy by bouncing the neutrons off these wires back into the fluid. The small dot bounces against the wire when energy demand is placed on the CR. Remember, only certain wires would react or expand when energy demand was placed on the CR. Scientists think that, depending on the demand, only certain wires would expand. Somehow, the energy output would be controlled by the amount of squares used. The U.S. government duplication of the CR. The USG made one in 2001 that actually worked for a short period of time. The operation was extremely classified and the device blew up at the Nevada test site, injuring two employees. The timeline for the CR is as follows. 1. 1947. CR found in the second crash site. 2. 1949. Los Alamos scientists first conducted experiments with the CR. At this time, no one knew what it was. 
Some scientists thought it was just a window. 3. 1954. Sandy Labs conducted several experiments with the CR, but still didn't know its actual use. 4. 1955. CR was lent to Westinghouse for experiments. 5. 1958. CR was lent to Corning Glass in an effort to determine its construction material. 6. 1962. CR first official test conducted at Los Alamos and published in a classified report. 7. 1970. CR was determined to be more than a window. The CR was found to fit into a space on the spacecraft. Scientists determined CR was some sort of energy device. 8. 1978. CR determined to be a high-powered energy device that provided electrical power to the spacecraft. 9. 1982. CR was first tested and produced energy. 10. 1987. CR was given to E-Systems for extensive testing. 11. 1990. CR was proven to be an unlimited power system. The construction and contents of the CR was learned. However, no one knew just how it worked. 12. 1998. CR project, the Magic Cube was started in an effort to accelerate the knowledge of the device. 13. 2001. CR project, the Magic Cube was transferred from Los Alamos Futures Division to its Special Projects Section K Division. Currently as of September 2002, the CR is contained at the Section K Division facilities, Los Alamos. 6.3. Project Gleam a highly classified project that deals with direct communication with the visitors. It is new communication technology, dealing with multi-frequency, sending units. Units direct multiple frequencies in a particular direction. High-speed sending system allows the beam to be propelled at an enormous speed. Not too much more known about it. Los Alamos and several contractors, including EGNG, BDM, Motorola, Risburn Corporation, and Sandia are all involved with this project. Facility built at Site 40, Nevada test site. One rumor is that the visitors provided us with this technology. It enables us to communicate with the visitors in a speedier way than in the past. Part of this program involves the use of chemical lasers, pushing the communication beam. As it was explained to me, in layman's terms, several frequencies are put together on a beam and propelled towards a target or receiver. The receiver then boosts the energy and ray sends the signal to another point relay. Somehow, the chemical laser pushes the beam, thus propelling it faster than normal. More information on this project may be forthcoming. 6. Technology transfer from Area 51 to Nevada test site, NTS. The NDS was established in the early 1950s by the old Atomic Energy Commission to conduct above-ground nuclear tests. The test site consists of 1,426 square miles of test space and a total of 5,470 square miles of bombing and other testing ranges. NDS is divided into 30 areas, which are then divided into units. Nuclear testing both above and below ground were conducted in eight of the 30 areas. Mercury is the base camp for NDS. Mercury includes all the support facilities to operate the NDS. Although, officially the Department of Energy's contractor, Bethel, operates NDS unofficially, NDS is controlled by U.S. Army Support Group, Lima. You won't find Lima mentioned in any official U.S. Army publications or unit listings. Lima is a classified operating unit. The security for NDS is officially performed by Wakenhut Security Services, a private department of energy contractor. However, of the 185 Wakenhut security officers, 57 are actually commissioned federal agents by the Department of Justice. An additional 80 U.S. military policemen perform classified security protection on NDS. An additional 44 USUF security police guard the Special Storage Facility, SSD, located in Area 6, Unit 23A. The SSF stores special stockpile weapons, nuclear weapons. The existence of this SSD is classified, 
since the U.S. government won't acknowledge it stores any more weapons than officially published under the test ban treaties. The SST has approximately 300 nuclear weapons. Next to this SST is another highly classified storage facility known as Site K. No one actually knows what is stored in Site K, but some believe it contains visitors' gifts to the U.S. Officially, NES advertises several facilities located on its property. One is the Device Assembly Facility in Area 6, Unit 2A. According to an official publication, this facility assembles nuclear weapons prior to underground testing. Unofficially, this facility conducts experiments on visitor gifts. Another facility contained on NDS, and officially named the Big Explosive Experimental Facility, conducts simulations of explosions. Unofficially, this facility houses the underground entrance to Site U, which contains classified underground testing facilities built in 1987. Sources report Site U is used to assemble visitors' propulsion systems. Although Bethel operates the NDS, several other contractors have buildings and conduct experiments on NDS. Amador Valley Operations, Los Alamos, Lawrence Livermore, EGNG, Special Technical Laboratories, the U of California, Special Physics Operational Laboratories, Sandia National Laboratories, BDM Corporation, Motorola, Kyle Wood Corporation, General Motors Remote Research Facility, DRAC, CIA, NSA, USN, US, Army Special Forces Training Center, USOF Scientific Evaluation Center, Defense Communication Agency, Remote Operations Facilities, US, National Reconnaissance Office, Advanced Physics Laboratories, MIT, Ken Corporation, and General Dynamics. Source, serpo.org, via Maurice Osborne. My take, could you imagine what would happen if a zero-point energy device was released to the public? It would destroy many industries and probably go a long way to solving global warming. Gas, oil, nuclear energies would all become redundant. Now, for a little bit of fun. We have an exciting announcement. We'll be doing a monthly giveaway. All you have to do is like and comment on our videos for the chance to win a variety of prizes, including hats, shirts, and more. The more you like and comment, the greater your chances. Oh, and subscribing doesn't hurt either. What are you waiting for? Smash that like button. You can get free stuff.